Hi everybody and welcome to Security Operations. Let's begin. A Security Operations Center or SOC is a team of IT security professionals tasked with monitoring a company's network and systems 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Their purpose of monitoring, it, uh, monitoring is to find vulnerabilities on the network, detect unauthorized activity, discover policy violations, detect intrusions, and support with the incident response. Okay, so let's begin with the first one. So find vulnerabilities on the network. A vulnerability is a weakness that an attacker can exploit to carry out things beyond their permission level. A vulnerability might be discovered in, in any device's software, operating system and programs uh, on the network, such as a server or a computer. For instance, the SOC might discover a set of Microsoft Windows computers that must be patched against a specific published vulnerability. Strictly speaking, vulnerabilities are not necessarily the SOC's responsibility. However, unfixed vulnerabilities affect the security level of the entire company. Detect unauthorized activity. Consider the case where an attacker discovered the username and password of one of the employees and used it to log into the company system. It is crucial to detect this kind of unauthorized activity quickly before it causes any damage. Many clues can help us detect this, such as geographic location. Discover policy violations. A security policy is a set of rules and procedures created to help protect a company against security threats and ensure compliance. What is considered a violation would vary from one company to another. Examples include downloading pirated, uh, pirated media files and sending confidential company files insecurely. Detect intrusions. Intrusions refer to system and network intrusions. One example scenario would be an attacker successfully exploiting our web application. Another example scenario would be a user visiting a malicious site and getting their computer infected. Support with the incident response. An incident can be an observation, uh, a policy violation, an intrusion attempt, or something more damaging such as major breach. Responding correctly to a severe incident is not an easy task. The SOC can support the incident response team handle the situation. This room focuses on the SOC services and everyday work. We recommend that you finish the Introduction to Defensive Security room before going through this one. Uh, and we have already done that on this channel, so you can go and check that out if you haven't watched that uh, walkthrough. Uh, and now we can just answer the questions. What does SOC stand for? And that will be Security Operations Center. Security Operation Center. Let me see, did I spell that right? Security Operations, no I didn't. Like this. Uh, security operations. Sorry, guys. There you go. How many hours a day does the SOC monitor the network? That will be 24 hours a day. There you go. And now we can continue to the next task, elements of security operations. In this task, we talk about example data sources that the SOC relies on, the services that the SOC provides, and an example scenario. Data sources. The SOC uses many data sources to monitor the network for signs of intrusions and to detect malicious behavior. Some of these sources are server logs, DNS activity, firewall logs, and DHCP logs. Server logs. There are many types of servers on a network, such as a mail server, web server, and domain controller on Microsoft Windows networks. Logs contain information about various activities, such as successful and failed login attempts, among many others. There is a trove of information that can be found in the server logs. DNS activity. DNS stands for Domain Name System and it's the protocol responsible for converting a domain name, such as triagmi.com, to an IP address such as the one that we see on the screen, on the screen, among other domain name related queries. One analogy of the DNS query is asking, how can I reach TryHackMe? And someone replying with the postal address. 
In practice, if someone tries to browse tryhackme.com, the DNS server has to resolve it and can log the DNS query to monitoring. The SOC can gather information about domain names uh, that internal systems are trying to com communicate with by merely inspecting DNS queries. Firewall logs. A firewall is a device that controls network packets entering and leaving the network mainly by letting them through or blocking them. Consequently, firewall logs can reveal much information about what packets passed or tried to pass through the firewall. DHCP logs. DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol and it is responsible for assigning an IP address to the systems that try to connect to a network. One analogy of the DHCP request would be when you enter a fancy restaurant and the waiter welcomes you and guides you to an empty table. Note that DHCP has automatically provided your device with the network settings whenever you can join a network without manual configuration. By inspecting DHCP transactions, we can learn about the devices that join the network. These are some of the most common data sources, however, many other sources can be used to aid in the network security monitoring and the other tasks of the SOC. A SOC might use a Security Information and Event Management System, or SIEM. The SIEM aggregates the data from the different sources so that the SOC can efficiently correlate the data and respond to attacks. SOC services. SOC services include reactive and proactive services in addition to other services. Reactive services refer to the tasks initiated after detecting an intrusion or a malicious event. Example reactive services include monitor security posture, vulnerability management, malware analysis, intrusion detection, and reporting. Monitor security posture. This is the primary role of the SOC, and it includes monitoring the network and computers for security alerts and notifications and responding to them as the need dictates. Vulnerability Management This refers to finding vulnerabilities in the company systems and patching them. The SOC can assist with this task but not necessarily execute it. Malware Analysis The SOC might recover malicious programs that reach the network. The SOC can do basic analysis by executing it in a control environment. However, more advanced analysis requires sending it to a dedicated team. Intrusion Detection An intrusion detection system, or IDS, is used to detect and log intrusions and suspicious packets. The SOC's job is to maintain such a system, monitor its alerts, and go through its logs as the need dictates. Reporting it is essential to report incidents and alarms. Reporting is necessary to ensure a smooth workflow and to support compliance requirements. Proactive services refer to the tasks handled by the SOC without any indicator of an intrusion. Example proactive services carried out by the, the uh, SOC include Network Security Monitoring or NSM, uh, Threat Hunting and Threat Intelligence. Network Security Monitoring. This focuses on monitoring the network data and analyzing the traffic to detect signs of intrusions. Threat Hunting. With threat hunting, the SOC assumes an intrusion has already taken place and begins its hunt to see if they can confirm this assumption. Threat Intelligence. Threat Intelligence focuses on learning about potential adversaries and their tactics and techniques to improve the company's defenses. The purpose would be to establish a threat-informed defense. Other services by the SOC include cybersecurity training. Many data breaches and intrusions can be avoided by raising user security awareness and arming them with solid security training. Example scenario. One role in a SOC is the SOC analyst. A SOC analyst is responsible for network security monitoring and log management. Let's consider the following scenario. While monitoring the network traffic, a SOC analyst notices a particular DNS query repeating every minute. This behavior is not that of a user browsing the internet, and every precisely one minute, they are making a new DNS query. The SOC analyst checks the source of the DNS query and identifies the cause as one laptop on the network. They isolate it and inspect it for signs of infection. They discover a process, 
program using DNS to communicate with a malicious server. Soon they found out that the computer was infected after visiting a malicious website by reviewing the computer logs. As a result, the laptop began communicating with a malicious server by hiding the messages in DNS queries. The laptop is cleaned and the threat hunting starts to ensure that no other computers are infected. And now let's answer the question, what does NSM stand for? And that is Network Security Monitoring. Okay, so let's type that in. Network uh, Security, let's see. And submit. There you go. And now we can move on to the last uh, task, practical example of SOC. We use a firewall to stop an ongoing attack in this task. A firewall is a device that inspects network packets entering and leaving a network or a system. The most basic types of firewalls inspect source and destination IP addresses and source and destination port numbers where applicable source and destination IP addresses. An IP address is a logical address that allows you to communicate over the internet. One analogy is the, uh, is the postal address. For example, a company needs a valid postal address to send and receive parcels. Think of the IP packet as a mail parcel. Source and destination port numbers. A computer has an IP address. Furthermore, each program on the computer needs a port number to communicate over the network. Uh, back to our analogy, a port number would be similar to a room number within a company. A firewall rule might be similar to the following. The above two rules dictate the following. All IP packets from the source IP address that we see right here to the destination IP address that we see right here to the destination port number, which is 80, uh, will be allowed, hence pass. All packets from the source IP address that we see right here to the destination uh, IP address that we see right here to the destination port number, which is 23, will be blocked, hence drop. Click on view site to begin the simulation. As a member of the SOC team, while monitoring the network and systems, you notice one malicious IP address attacking one of the company's computers. It seems that they are targeting many destination ports with malicious packets. It seems best if we block them at the firewall level. Okay, so let's do what we are asked. View site. Okay. The website at this IP address is uh, under attack. Quickly add some firewall rules to stop the server from crashing. The packets in red are uh, from the attacker's machine. Okay, start simulation. Uh, the source IP is going to be this one. So this one right here, right? So we have to find it. And the destination IP is going to be uh, this one, right? So we choose that and the port will be 80 and I know that from before because I finished uh, this room uh, a while ago and we add the rule and now we have managed to um, save the server, right? So um, now we can answer the question, uh, add the necessary firewall rules to block the ongoing attack. What is the flag that you have received after successfully stopping the attack? And the flag we received was this one, okay? So we can just copy and we are going to paste it here submit and we are done with this room okay everybody uh, if you enjoyed the video found it helpful please give it a thumbs up i would really appreciate it and of course subscribe to the channel uh, for more videos on try hack me talk to you next time